Hi everyone. In today's video, I'm going to go through the maintenance steps I do after I've played with my car over the weekend. So the first thing I do is to undo the top deck of the chassis by undoing the screws here and on the other side and over here in the front. The reason you do this is through the course of the weekend, the chassis will undergo stresses, which is known as tweak, which means the chassis would have bent slightly. So it would, you can see now it's flat. So it may be a bit twisted. So this is exaggerated obviously, but it would be twisted up like that. By undoing the top deck, you allow the chassis to rest in a relaxed state and will help keep the chassis flat. You really want to keep the chassis as flat as possible because over time, if your chassis ends up tweaking, like a little bit up or down, it will make your, firstly the handling will be inconsistent, and secondly, it will make measuring your ride height and your dam stops very difficult because you can imagine if this side is a little bit higher, then if you have the same number of down stop or ride height on both sides of the rear, it may actually be wrong. So you really want to try to keep the chassis as flat as possible. So then now we're on the subject of tweak. The best way to check if your chassis is tweaked or not is to place your car on your setup board. The reason you want to do this is your setup board should be 100% flat. So all these types of measurements should only be done on your setup board anyway. So what you can do is when you put your car down flat, you press on the body posts. And when you press on the body posts, you want to check to see if your chassis will move at all, if there's any gap. So I'm pressing here and you can see there is none to very little. You can see a little bit of tweak. So the chassis is very minorly tweaked, but this is still what I got acceptable. So like I said before, you want to do this for all four of the body posts and to look at the bottom to make sure that all four sides of your chassis are lying flat. So the next thing I do is to undo the shocks from the A-arms and let them rest freely. This prevents a couple of things. Firstly, it prevents the shock from being in a constantly compressed state by being attached to the A-arms. And it prevents the A-arms from constantly being forced down by the shock. So it's just better for the entire suspension system. Other little things you should do is to check your differentials or your spools um, to check that the teeth are free of debris because as you're going along the track, bits of tire or whatnot will slowly make their way into these gaps. So what you want to do is, what I do is I take a pair of my ply, uh, needle nose tweezers and I just go through and clean out each one. I've just done this before so it's quite clean. So what you can do is you can just visually inspect and make sure they're clean and just move the, move the spool and then when you see there's a dirty bit you just clean it out. So you want to do that here and with the real rear differential and you can also inspect the drive pulleys which are in the middle here so you can inspect this pulley from the back side you can see here and the other pulley as you can see you can turn the car around and then inspect it this way Another good thing to do is to make sure that your gear mesh between your pinion and your gear is still correct because as you are playing with your car, especially if you get involved in accidents with people, the motor might actually shift a little bit from the motor mount and then as such the gear mesh may change which will make it very easy to strip the gears on here. So you want basically a little bit of play, but not too much. So you want, see here, you just want it just to move a little bit. So what you should do also is to move it, move your gears a little bit and then check in a few spots just to make sure that's consistent. So this one, 
is looking okay. You also want to check the conditions of your drive shaft and your wheel bearings. So you would take your drive your wheel hub off, take your drive shaft out, and then check your wheel bearings in each corner. Also, it's important to lubricate your CV joints in here and also your joints in the back here. So you can see it's important to do the inspection because you start to notice things that you might not pick up. So you can see here, the drive rear drive shaft here, the pin and the, the cup or whatever it's called, is starting to have a lot of play. So this means that I will have to very soon change out the drive shaft because you don't want this breaking as you're flying along. That could be disastrous. Another thing I've noticed is you can see the plastic thingy. I don't know what this is called, but anyway, it's actually split. So this needs replacing also. So this part is very cheap and it's very easy to replace. But if this breaks as you're driving along, the car could very easily lose control because then you would lose drive just to this wheel and then you would get all the other wheels going which would probably make the car spin around and then if you're happening to do this if this happens to happen on a street as you're accelerating out it's very possible you'd have a big accident and then break some other stuff so that's why it's important after you've played with the car for a few days to do a general checkup and this will help avoid any nasty accidents that may happen. So that's just a quick tip video here. So hope you like it and it was useful. If so, please like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.